so severe in, in good in the other way he can, he can give so much without bounty that it is unimaginable what do you think of a Jannah my brothers and sisters the lowest level of which is 100 times of that which is in this dunya what do you think of the Jannah what do you think of the Jannah it is for this reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that Allah has created for the slaves لا فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفيت لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يكسبون. Allah subhanahu wa taala tells us in the Quran, so verily no soul knows. There is not a single person who knows that which has been hidden from it, waiting as a reward, as a gift, as a surprise gift from Allah subhanahu wa taala, as a reward for what they used to do, for what they used to do. Let's talk about. This Jannah, this reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by which He will reward His righteous slaves. This Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is huge. It has 70,000 rings and, it is, and each ring is pulled by 70,000 angels. It is huge. It is a hellfire as well, it is also Jannah. It is huge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had described the Jannah to be its expanse and its dimensions to be the space and the dimensions or the width of the heavens and the earth. So it is huge, large distance, huge in size, something that we can't even imagine. It has levels, it has 100 levels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will increase in these, in these levels as He wishes to, who, who, to whoever He wishes. And one hadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has left these levels for those people who strive in His cause, for those people who are mujahideen, those who strive in His cause. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created these levels. The lowest of these levels, as I've, as I've already told you, is uh, 100 times better than what is in this earth. However, the highest of these levels is an amazing level. Is an amazing level. Because it is in the middle part of Jannah, it is the best part of Jannah, it is a place where in Rasulullah Sallallahu and his and, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's beloved will be. It is its its roof is the throne of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the roof of the highest part of Jannah. Its roof is the throne of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also described in the Quran how. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created Jannah. So he mentioned that the bricks in Jannah are made of gold and silver. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that there are two Jannahs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for every person uh, of good. One made of gold and one made of silver. Meaning that everything in that uh, part of Jannah for him is made of gold. And, and, the, and the second one, everything in that part of Jannah is made of silver. Okay? Jannatan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. One of them made of gold, everything in it made of gold, so therefore the bricks will be made of gold, the rubies and pearls, which are, you know, the, the, the pebbles on the ground will be rubies and pearls, the, the, the cement of, of which between all of these bricks would be of, of, of musk, as, as Rasulullah told us. Uh, the trees, the trees would be made of gold, of course it's in the gold Jannah, they would be made of gold, its leaves would be made of leaves of gold, and its fruit, as Rasulullah told us in authentic hadith in Bayhaqi, he said that the fruit of, of, the, of, this, of this tree in Jannah will be closer to you than you can want. So for example, even if you wish for, the, for a fruit, the tree would actually come with its branches close to your mouth and give you the fruit so that you can just bite off it. And uh, it is, and uh, Rasulullah on the, in that same hadith he told us, it is sweeter, that the fruits of Jannah are sweeter than, than asal, than honey, and uh, it is softer than foam. Softer than foam, so it just melts in your mouth. Fairy floss, have you had fairy floss? Yeah? Just melts in your mouth, and so sweet. Just, just imagine, subhanAllah, the fruits of Jannah, the cherries of Jannah, the apples of Jannah. The pears of Jannah, the peaches of Jannah, subhanAllah. This is just as a fleet, uh, just as a you know, normal, normal food that you will get in Jannah whenever you want. Because for, for in Jannah is whatever your heart desires. Whatever your heart desires. Your clothes in Jannah will be of heavy silk. Silken clothes that you have been forbidden to wear 
in the next life, uh, in this life, you will wear in Jannah. Heavy silk, nice silk. Have you seen this nice silk, mashallah, that comes from China? Nice silk. This is, of course, only the silk of this dunya. What about the silk of the Akhirah? Nice silky sheets, nice silky, silky clothes, subhanAllah. You can just melt in them. Nice. We used to wear them before, before we became, became practicing. It was so soft and nice, subhanAllah. Nice and silky. These are the clothes of Jannah. And they're heavy brocade, they're nice designs. Beautiful patterns, nice designs in gold and silver. Naam. You will have a riding beast. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want you to trouble yourself. And why, why take the trouble to walk? When you can ride. And your riding beast is like the burraq. Rasulullah so mentioned the riding beast in Jannah, in authentic hadith of Abi Shayba. He mentions like the burraq. And the burraq is like a, a small uh, a pony, however it has wings. So it is this animal that will take you in Jannah wherever your heart's desire. Wherever your heart's desire. Hmm, where shall we visit today? Shall we visit Rasulullah Shall we visit Abu Bakr? Shall we visit Musa Who do you want to visit today? Shall we visit Ibn Taymiyyah? Who shall we visit today? Wherever your heart's desire, wherever your heart's desire, you will be on this steed, this riding beast, and this will take you wherever you want to go. Wherever you want to go. And then we come to the women of paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us that the women of paradise, the hurrain of paradise, are not created from dust and clay like you and me, no. They're not created from the mud. They have been created from misk. They have been created from misk. Their very essence is smelly, nice, beautiful scent. Their very essence. Then how can they not be beautiful? Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, he, in his Nuniya, he mentioned and described how the beautiful women of paradise are. And wallahi, if I had the time to translate, I would have brought it to you because it is just so beautiful. Just so beautiful. And Ibn Qayyim, rahimullah, as you know, he is, a, he is a magician with his words. And he, subhanAllah, writes the most beautiful descri- descriptions of the, of the Hur al-Ain of paradise from their body features, from their manners, from the way that they will sing to their husbands. They will sing to their husbands from, from, the, from the fact that every time you go to them, the next time you go to them, you'll find them virgin again. You'll find them virgin again. And, that, and from the fact that the man will be, whenever he sees her, he will want to sleep with her because of, the, of, uh, because of, the, of his desire. From the fact that the Hur Ain protect themselves just for their husbands. So you don't have to be jealous. When you go off to the other part of paradise to have a visit with Shaykh Uslami Taymiyyah, you don't have to be jealous because someone might take you. No, no, no. Nothing at all like this in paradise. You are completely satisfied in every single way that you can ever think of. No bathrooms, no toilets, nothing at all. No feeling, oh, that wasn't nice and going to bathrooms. Nothing of that sort in paradise. It is only a burp that you give and it smells nice even. It doesn't smell of curry. It smells of nice, nice perfume, subhanAllah. It is unbelievable. When you sweat and you will sweat only so that you increase in perfume. Because your sweat will smell of perfume. It is a na'im that we cannot imagine. A blessing that we cannot imagine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give every man the power of 40 men to sleep with his wife. 40 men, the energy of 40 men, imagine that. <laughs> the, the energy of 40 men because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows these are the basic ways in which a human being has pleasure, isn't it? From eating and drinking, and so Allah has given us the perfect solution for eating and drinking, the best foods, and the absolutely exquisite places in paradise. And in the same way, sleeping with your wives, this is something nice, isn't it? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the energy of 40 men to every single man. We won't be weak and frail, neither will we be all, you know, small and, and, and thin, no. Our ages will be 33. Our ages will be 33, young and healthy and medically, the, 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 the strength of the, of the muscle fibers 
is the strongest at the age of 33. So Alhamdulillah, we will be 33, we 